Good afternoon, patrons. First of all, I want to thank you for being patrons of the show. And so I decided to put this series of videos together just for patrons. And um, it's a way for me to really sit down and kind of get in the nitty gritty uh, from the beginner to advanced users on how to use in this particular series, Windows 8. Now we are going to be working with a video, uh, I'm sorry, a book uh, as we go through this series called uh, Windows 8.1 the missing manual. It'll look something like this. You can buy it through the uh, link in the video description below or uh, you can just follow the video series. Uh, I would recommend of course if you have the option to pick up the book. Now the first thing we're going to do here today is actually install Windows 8.1. Now this isn't part of the book um, and this is for those of you who have not yet installed Windows 8. I wanted to have an introductory course on that part, that way if somebody's making this transition for the first time, or if they just ordered it online, they'd be able to pull it right up and be able to get started, um, started rolling with it as soon as they receive it in the mail and such. Now let me go ahead and launch Windows 8.1 here, the installer, and we'll walk through uh, the entire uh, process. And um, what we'll be using in my case is VMware. And VMware is a virtualization software package that lets you run operating systems within operating systems. So actually, I, uh, I'm using Windows 7, um, and I'm excited about this series because I'm going to learn a lot about Windows 8.1 as well. Uh, you may see some jump cuts throughout this video so that I can make it shorter so you don't have to sit here and watch the entire installation. Now what I did is I actually uh, put the CD-ROM in my drive, and then I would launch it or boot up the computer and uh, it would detect the CD in the CD-ROM drive and it would launch the Windows 8 installation right from there. And then I'm going to walk you guys through this installation itself. Now if it does not boot, then you have to go into your BIOS. You know how when your screen boots up, it lets you press a key to actually uh, go into your BIOS settings and you have to go into something called boot order and you have to make sure that your CD-ROM drive is set to boot up before your hard drive. Uh, so you got to make sure you do that if for some reason it does not boot off your CD. Once you get to the basic installation screen, uh, the rest of it's kind of straightforward. We're going to go through the language, uh, we're going to choose our keyboard input, and then we're going to click install now. And setup is starting. Now you probably saw a jump cut there a little bit because I actually had to enter my Windows key. I didn't want you guys to see what key I entered. And uh, of course you got to read and accept the licensing agreement. And then what I'm going to do here is rather than do an upgrade, I'm going to do a custom installation. You would do an upgrade if you're upgrading from a previous version of Windows. But I actually recommend backing up all your stuff and just doing a completely clean install. Anytime you're doing an operating system installation, upgrades aren't really that friendly. Uh, so let's go ahead and do custom. And then this is the part where we're actually going to format our hard drive. Uh, basically, we have to clean out our hard drive before we go in and actually install the new system. In this case, it's already deleted, but uh, you guys will probably see if you had a previous operating system on here, you will see a drive that's installed on there, and you'll press this delete button, and then it'll say on allocated space. Um, and you may have to delete multiple partitions here, and it'll actually combine all of them into a single drive. And uh, at this point, you can really, uh, this is where you, remember, once you do this, you delete everything. So make sure you've backed up everything before you've gotten to this point. Because uh, once you do it, it cannot be undone. Um, well, it can be. It's just it'll cost you a lot of money. Uh, so I'm just going to go ahead and after I delete all my partitions, I'm going to use all of this hard drive space, and I'm going to install Windows 8 on this this single drive. Uh, you have the option to split those up if you wish to make multiple partitions. Usually, don't recommend that unless you have a very specific reason to do so. So I'm going to go ahead and just click next, and it'll start copying over the Windows files. Okay, so it just finished installing all the files and now it's prompting to do a restart. I'm just going to go ahead and click restart now or you can wait the full 10 seconds. And we'll see what happens after our initial reboot here. We are greeted with the Windows 8 logo yet again. Yeah, I don't know if I'm, I'm happy with that, that logo redo they have there. <laughs> I kind of like the colorful one better, but hey. I guess they're trying to really change their image on this with the Windows 8 release. Uh, and we'll get into more of that uh, as we kind of move forward in the series, uh, especially when we get into the nitty gritty of Windows 8. We'll talk about specifically why they did certain things, why they're making this transition. And uh, there are some benefits to it as well as uh, frustrations. Uh, but Windows 8 is, is one of the most, the most dramatic changes Windows has made historically. 
uh, to their operating system, which is why a lot of people are, are getting frustrated with it. Uh, but uh, it was one of those adapt or die situations for Windows. Uh, and you'll understand a little bit more about that after this series of videos is done. Okay, let's see what we got here. It looks like it's booting up in an awkward resolution, which is fine. Okay, so now it's going to be installing your device drivers. That's making sure that you actually have all your hardware properly installed on your system. Says it's getting ready. Must be getting close. Okay, so it did another reboot after the getting ready phase. Probably, uh, that's pretty normal in the Windows operating systems, just so you guys know. Uh, when they do fresh hardware installs, typically Windows always likes to do a reboot. Now, Windows 8... Uh, from what I recall, does a much better job of this, of requiring the reboot, um, but it still does require the occasional reboot. And here we are. We have actually officially installed Windows 8. That's all there is to it, guys. You'd be amazed at how simplified this entire process has become. Typically, the, the biggest hurdles that people run into during this entire process is they'll essentially go in and, uh, and not find their hard drive, um, when they go to do the installation, that's pretty common. Uh, and a lot of that has to do with them properly setting, uh, having hard drive installed, make sure you have the cables all installed on it. Uh, and you have to have a power cable and your serial ATA cable. Uh, another thing you might run into is that uh, it won't detect your CD-ROM drive. You gotta make sure you go into the BIOS, like we said at the beginning, and setting that up. That makes sure that uh, it'll actually detect your uh, disk when it does the installation on PowerUp. And another concern that people usually have is with deleting that partition. Make sure you've backed up all of your data, because remember, once you delete the partition, it is completely deleted. Now, we're not going to walk here through this configuration part, because this part's pretty much done. This is going to be the next video. We're going to actually walk through the first time setup of Windows 8. But that's essentially how you install it. It's very straightforward, very easy to do if you've never done it before. And I uh, hope this helped you guys out. So thank you guys for becoming patrons. And as always, stay tuned because there's going to be tons of videos in this series. I'm excited about teaching you guys a bunch of stuff about Windows 8.1.